To configure the console for recording or mixing, uh, we should probably point out um, the channel select section, which is currently inactive. By pressing the plus and minus button together, you can now activate the section. And we can currently see that channel 1 is selected. This is also reflected in the meter bridge. You can see the white square, which indicates that channel 1 is selected. Now, uh, in a typical digital console manner, you can make changes to the channel, for example, assigning it to a mix bus uh, A or B or C or all of them. You can also make changes to the channel inputs, uh, to the processors and the processing order, as well as the position of the channel output, also known as CHOP, as well as the meters. So, in a typical configuration in the studio, I would probably select uh, channel 1 from the to channel. I'll use the select button over here on channel 24, which selects all of the channels on the left hand side, but not on the right hand side. We can also see that from 1 to 24 everything is selected. And for these channels, we would like to confirm it's a bit hard to read the microphone input. We don't want line but microphone input. Um, on the right hand side, however, we want to have all the returns, so we're using this console in split mode. The left-hand side will be to tape, the right-hand side will be from tape. And if we want to select the right-hand side, I would now clear all. And then select, excuse me. Select 25. To 48 which selects all of the right-hand side. And now we can see 25 to 48 is selected. And for these channels, we would like to activate the line inputs. For all channels, we would now like to move the faders to unit again. However, uh, this could be a bit of a tedious task. If you want to have a faster way, go into the center section over here, where there are different press buttons. And under MISC on the right-hand side, you will find the channel to zero. And magically, bam, all of them go up to Unity. So now let's configure Pro Tools. So uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, I've got my Pro Tools session on the screen. I have 24 channels uh, ready for recording. Let me just zoom in a little bit. I have 24 channels that I would like to record. So um, per default, the inputs are set in a sequential order from 1 to 24 already. Um, we need to configure the outputs, and since we're using the console in split mode, it's a little bit unique, as we would now use the input 1 and route from there to output 25. And if you want to do this in a sequential order for all the channels, you will end up with 25 to 48. I need a key command for this, so that's hard to do while I hold my phone. That's the way how the signal is routed from the microphone input over here. Input is the microphone input down the channel path to the fader. Um, then from this channel to Pro Tools, input number one. Monitored through Pro Tools, output 25. And then returning on the right hand side of the console on channel 25 through the fader. And in this case, we want to make sure that only the channel fader is 25 to 48 reach the mix A. And again, we do that by selecting the right-hand side. In my, hand, in my case, that's also selected. And we assign these channels to mix A, which is now reflected in the channel meter mix A. We want to make sure that on the left-hand side, or to tape side of the console, none of the channels go to mix A and make sure mix A is turned off. Otherwise, you would hear the signal twice from tape and to tape, and that's probably not a wise idea. Good. Uh, let's configure the console a little bit further. I would like to clear my selection and go back to a select um, channel 1. To channel 24. And as you can see currently, all of the channels are configured in a sense that the input, some of the channels, not all of them, has some inconsistency at the moment. For example, look at channel 23, that's configured differently than 24. 
And what I would like to do is configure all of them in the same way. And what I would like to achieve is to check the job or channel output to post fader. That's the meter over here. And this sets now all of the channels to post fader chop. In other words, my signal will not travel via the microphone gain down the channel module all the way to the fader and from the fader to the channel output, from there to Pro Tools, through Pro Tools and then returns through the line input on the right hand side. Notice this is called line in contrast to input. Input means microphone, line means line. And on the right hand side I would like to configure the chop in a different way. Currently it sits on the input, so let's select all the channels. We repeat the routine. I clear my selection. Select channel 25 and I expand my selection to channel 48. And for all the right hand side channels I would like to keep the channel output pre-fader. The difference between input and pre-fader is that the input will pick it up directly from the input. Pre-fader will still pick it up pre-fader but post-processes. And since I might want to use some EQ in the monitor path, which then should be audible in the headphones later on, we need to do that post-fader. Good. That concludes setting up the console for a recording session.